If you're new to hunting samba, the first step, learn to shoot. If you can't shoot, you're up against it. It's the primary skill, the most important skill, is learn to shoot. <laughs> uh, problem with you, Burke, <laughs> you just can't shoot. Now that hurt, that hurt. As a young hunter to get told that, that dinnered my pride a bit. The truth was, he was right. That was over 50 years ago I got told that. Now I had, had an embarrassing run of misses. I don't want to tell you how many, but it was embarrassing. So, I had to learn to shoot. The advice I was given was get a 22 and a heap of ammunition and practice. A bit like when you watch these Western movies, isn't it? They stick a bottle up, though we don't shoot at bottles, that's not very good, is it? We stick a bottle up, no we don't, we stick a can up, a can. And we practice shooting at things like that offhand. Well, you might think that's a pretty big target. It is. 9 inches or 230 millimetres. But it's much smaller than the vital lung heart area on a Samba deer. If we can consistently hit that, and when I mean consistently, I mean 10 out of 10 shots at whatever range, we are well within the capabilities of being able to take Samba cleanly. Forget about the advertising like the one minute of angle guaranteed group out of a rifle. It's not that relevant. The relevance is being able to consistently keep our bullets within a target of around this size. It's representative of a small deer, not a mature Samba deer, so we need to take that into account. Now, obviously, the smaller the deer, the more requirement for much tighter and clustered accuracy from the firearm. An animal this size, these bullets here might have clipped the liver, but they're not good killing shots. So the smaller the deer, the more precise we have to be. On a big samba, it would be twice as big in the chest area here. So we can get away with being able to shoot like that broadside on a big mature animal. This is achievable. The thing is, when we're hunting Samba in the bush environment, we don't have the luxury of using a bipod, we don't have the luxury of shooting prone. We generally shoot offhand or using a tree as a rest. There's only one way we can achieve that and that's through practice, practice and more practice. It isn't a natural skill to be able to shoot straight. It is an acquired skill. A bench rest set up like this is basically for sighting our rifle in, developing our basic skills such as trigger control, but it's not for practice. There's lots of good information on YouTube about how to sight a rifle incorrectly. But what I will say, for bush hunting, I like to have it hit point of impact at around 50 yards. That would make this rifle shoot about an inch and a half high at 100 yards. Both these targets were shot at 100 yard distance from a bench rest, right? They're both acceptable group sizes. Even though some people might think this is too big, they're acceptable for bush hunting Samba deer. What's not acceptable is the distance from the point of aim to the centre of the group. We really need our group cluster down closer to the point of aim. Practice, once we understand the potential of the firearm, should be from the normal field position we'd use while we're hunting. Footballers, cricketers, golfers, clay target shooters. To be any good at it, they have to train, they have to practice. So as a deer hunter, should be exactly the same for us. We can't be any good at it if we don't practice or train. Now we can get to a level 
where we can break that quite easily at 30 metres with the rifle. Bit of theatre there. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot at it in the air. Right, now, that is great fun, particularly for kids. A bullseye, now it's pretty hard to hit a bullseye on a target. But break that at 30 metres and then start to shoot at the small fragments. A lot of enjoyment in shooting. If you don't enjoy it, well, it's not much fun, is it? Practice makes perfect. In my case, it doesn't make perfect. It just makes better. I couldn't do that if I didn't practice. Now, I've built my confidence. I've got two choices. I move back further from the big gong or I challenge myself on the smaller one. We'll have a bit of a play here. I'll turn the camera off because I don't want you to see how bad I go on the little one. Glad I turned the camera off. <laughs> a bit harder to hit, a bit harder, but it's just that's, you've got to make it fun. If this isn't fun, if learning to shoot and practice isn't fun, mm, stamp collecting, that's probably a good idea. Now it's all well and good to practice with a 22, right? That develops our skills, but there's a big difference between the 22 and a centerfire rifle. What I've got here is a 270 and you'll see the difference. It's not just the sound. Right, there's a big difference in the recoil and the handling of the firearm. This is a lot heavier it's important that we practice with the 22, but for myself, it's also very important that I practice with the center fire. I don't need to fire a lot of shots. One problem we can get into with a center fire rifle is short cycling the bolt when we fire. Now there's nothing in this, right? So we close it. And one of the problems is it comes up and quite often people don't pull their bolt all the way back and it just comes halfway back. So it can't pick up the next round and you and you got a jam, and you're in the poo. Now, luckily, we don't hunt things in Australia that are going to eat you. But if it's going to eat you, and you've short cycled, you're in deep. Every rifle's different. Safety's different. Bolt throw's different. Balance is different. Handling's completely different. Practice, practice with whatever you're going to use when you hunt. Dry firing with no ammunition is a terrific form of practice. It teaches us how to manipulate the bolt properly, how to squeeze the trigger properly. We aim at a target, we will know instantly when we squeeze that trigger whether we have hit the target or not. We don't need to burn heaps of ammo. But, here's a big but, it will show up our faults in handling the firearm. If you fumble, it's going to show up. If you think you can do it, you try and do that a hundred times and see whether you fumble. So when we're ready to shoot, we close the bolt. The safety's on, normally, right? So when we go to shoot, another thing we should be doing when we're practicing is how we would mount the rifle. So we carry the rifle in our hands. It's our opportunity to shoot. There he is. Right, I've done the safety's gone off. It's the total process. And I pulled the bolt all the way back. That's a start, but it's important to practice with this firearm that I'm going to hunt with. Or any of the firearms I'm going to hunt with. They have different, different types of safeties. There's a warning. We can get caught out by using rifles with different types of safeties, such as a thumb safety here, or a slide safety like this here. If we're swapping from rifle to rifle, it's just too easy to be there when the chips are down trying to turn the slide safety off with your thumb here because that's what you're used to. When I'm hunting over hounds, it's not uncommon 
to have to run 100, 150 metres, sometimes even more. Now you want to try that when you're an old fart like me. That gets your ticker going, doesn't it? Eh? But it's not unusual to do that. So that's another aspect we can put into our practice. We can run that 100 metres, 150 metres, pick the rifle up, then try and hit that 9 inch gong. It's a different ball game then. Might try that in a minute. I was just going for a run. I'd love to tell you it was a kilometre. But that would be bullshit. Right. One of the things, when we hunt over hands, we quite often have to run. Well, that's better than the time before. I thought I was recording before, but didn't turn the camera on. This is only a 22, but I still managed to short cycle it. I was out of breath, and don't think this is not just to do with hound hunters. If you're stalking quite often, you're huffing and puffing coming up a hill, or you're cold, you're wet and miserable, so practice takes many forms. It's something we should be doing under all conditions. Beautiful day today, bad day for filming, because of the bloody flies. Anyway, practice, practice under all conditions, right? Even if it's windy, even if it's raining, when you're hunting, we're gonna have to shoot under those very conditions. I think, I think, Oh, ticker's all right, but I think I'll sit down and have a drink of water. Well, I think about it. Fatigue affects our capacity to think. Same as when I was running. It affected my capacity to cycle that bolt properly. Right? But it's not just cycling the bolt, it's other things. So we've always got to be mindful that fatigue will affect how we react and how we behave. Well, having said that, five rounds to go. You would have noticed throughout the video that when I've been using the rifle, it had no sling on it. The reason is, that's my preferred option when I'm bush stalking, is to carry the firearm in my hands. So why is my preferred option to take the sling off. Several reasons. One, removes this temptation to walk along with the rifle on your shoulder. And I will guarantee that if there's more than three people watching this video, that someone's being caught out. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's all over, sunshine. Yeah. But there is a way that if you need to carry your rifle on a sling, my preferred method for carrying a firearm with a sling on is I reverse sling it this way. The reason I do it, there's several reasons here. One, I've got control of the firearm, I've got my hand on it. Two, if an opportunity arises for a quick shot, the rifle comes up, the hand goes under, sling supports the rifle, rifle comes up and I take the shot a much more steady stance than taking a rifle off your shoulder and having the sling swing everywhere. That rifle, that scope's wobbling like old Billy over that swing. The sling moves. The movement moves the rifle. There's a way around that. The way around that is to hold the sling and practice holding the sling against the stock. A tree's always a handy thing, as long as that deer's not looking at me. Well, I hit the gong, but I took too long. More practice. Peter, more practice. Now, I'm not a terrific shot. I'm just a reasonable shot. But, if I didn't practice, I wouldn't even be a reasonable shot.
You really didn't think I wasn't gonna cheat, did you?